How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here, and in this video we're going to be covering a few quick steps in which you can take to solve Windows crashes, errors, blue screens, and make your PC way more stable. This can both help you fix pre-existing issues if your PC is currently running into any of these errors, or it can also help prevent these issues from ever occurring on your system. While well, this video can also serve as something which you keep in your back pocket in case you do run into any of these issues, here are a few things in which you should try and everyone should know. With all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows, and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. But first of all, going to start off with the most basic and simple to apply fixes, which could help you resolve any potential issues issues you're experiencing with inside of Windows, PC crashing, or blue screens. First of all, we're going to be removing unnecessary games, applications, and programs from the PC, whether they are old or new, if you don't need them, because they could be causing potential issues, and it's very quick and easy to do. Navigate to the bottom left-hand side, type add, select add or remove programs. Everything with inside of here you are sure you don't need or don't want to use anymore, simply click on the application or go to the right-hand side to the three dots, then select uninstall. It's important that you don't just uninstall absolutely everything with inside of here, only uninstall the applications you know you don't need or did not come with Windows. If you're not entirely sure if something is necessary for your PC or it looks important, leave that application alone and move on to the next. Even if this step doesn't fix the issue in which you're currently having, it will at least free up some extra drive space in your PC, provide some system maintenance and help optimize your system ever so slightly. Once you're done clearing out your application list, select exit out. Next up on the basic fix list is to navigate to the bottom left hand side, select your Windows settings or just simply search for settings. Alternatively, you can search for update in the bottom left hand side and select system update. Head to the top right hand side to Windows Update. You then want to apply any and all Windows updates which are available with inside of it to your system. This will update your drivers to match the necessary driver packages included in the version of Windows you're running. This will then update Windows which could also help fix any potential issues or bugs you're experiencing in your PC and it's a necessary troubleshooting step. Choose to download and install them, restart your system until you're notified that Windows is completely up to date and you're good to go. Next up we're going to be doing a system wide scan and repair on all Windows files. This will scan the entire Windows file system find any corrupted, missing or damaged files, but the Windows Server will then be able to provide all of the necessary replacements for any damaged, missing or corrupt files to help fix any potential issues you're running into. Even if you're running on a PC which isn't experiencing issues currently, this is definitely worthwhile doing to ensure that your Windows file system is healthy. For this, we'll navigate to the bottom left hand side. We'll then type in CMD, right click on command prompt and run this as an administrator, then select yes. You must run this as admin, otherwise the command will not be recognized. If you want to copy and paste the command if you're worried about spelling mistakes or typing it correctly, you can find the command linked in the description down below to copy and paste. Alternatively, we're going to be typing in SFC space slash scan now. Select enter. This will take a few moments to initialize on most PCs, so just leave it. And after a few short moments, it will then notify you that the system scan has begun and the process will take some time. Once the verification has completed, you'll then be notified if any errors have occurred. As you can see on my screen, Windows Resource Protection found corrupt files and have successfully repaired them. Once this is then completed, exit out. I would then recommend taking yourself to the bottom left hand side, right clicking on your power button and selecting restart. When you restart, there may be a small Windows update which applies automatically. Once you boot it in, log in as usual and Windows should now have fixed all errors found within inside of your file system. If you are still running into issues or if you'd just like another box to tick off, what we can now do is run a memory diagnostic to ensure that you aren't running into any memory issues in your PC. For this, we're going to navigate to the bottom left hand side and type in control space panel. Open up the control panel, navigate over to the system and security main tab, select this, go to the top right hand side and we're going to search memory. Once you've searched this, navigate down to Windows tools and diagnose your computer's memory problems. Select this option, you you should then be given the check your computer for memory problems tab. What we're then going to do is select restart now and check for problems. Once the system has restarted, after a few short moments, the Windows memory diagnostic tool will automatically boot on your system and should look very similar to this. The colors could be slightly different, but the application process should be the same. It will then give you the status of which test it's running. This can take a little while on your system, but it's definitely a worthwhile process because this is a sure way to find most memory issues, whether it be an unstable overclock or your RAM could just be on its way out. This will help narrow down this issue and see if memory could be causing your Windows errors, stutters, or outright crashes. It's also worth noting that you do not have to be present for this test. You can simply walk away from the computer, do other things, come back in a little while when the test has been completed, 
My memory diagnostic is just finished, the PC is automatically restarted. To find the results of your memory test, you'll need to navigate down to the bottom left hand side, type event space viewer. Open up the event viewer app, navigate over to Windows logs, click on the drop down menu, then head down to system. Right click on system, select find, you then need to type in memory. Select find next. This should then select a piece of information from your event list. Under the source, this should be called memory diagnostics, navigate down to the bottom, where it will then give you the information of the test. For me, this says the Windows memory diagnostic tested this computer's memory and detected no errors. You can also choose to select find next where it will then find any other memory diagnostic rundowns that may have already run in the background of your system. For most people you'll more than likely find that no errors have been detected but what happens if you do detect errors? Well my first port of action will be to make sure that you aren't running any memory overclocks or if you are running XMP or DOCP memory profiles go into your BIOS and disable those profiles run the test again and see if you get any errors. If you do proceed to get errors another thing you can try is to take off the side panel of your computer, remove one of the RAM sticks from your PC, run the test again. If you're still getting errors, put that RAM stick back, but take out a different RAM stick, run the test again, and if that fixes your errors, you'll now know which one of the RAM sticks in your system is causing issues where you can then order a replacement, or you could potentially even just go without using it. For another potential fix which could be surprising is removing unnecessary USB devices from your system. This is typically going to affect those of you running on desktops as you may be running unnecessary USB devices. If you run into stuttering issues, especially on AMD Ryzen CPU systems, this could be due to you overloading the USB controller on your system. This could also be causing outright crashes, blue screens, or in some cases, a broken USB device can can cause the PC to outright black screen and turn off. All you'll need to do is start unplugging unnecessary USB devices from your system. Even if you have external hard drives, DVD drives, any unnecessary USB devices, I'd recommend just having a keyboard, mouse, and if possible, an ethernet cable connected to your PC to ensure that you aren't using your Wi-Fi and just running those peripherals installed to your PC. Run through your typical tasks, games, or whatever it is you find that you are doing when you're experiencing crashes, freezes, or stuttering. And if the issues have now gone away, you'll now know that one of the USB devices you've unplugged is potentially causing the issue or you had too many USB devices installed. Plug one of the USB devices back in, run the same tests, continue that step until you find the problematic USB device. Next up is power supply related issues. This doesn't mean that you outright have to replace the power supply on your system. This could be due to you running a cheap power supply, a power supply that could be on its way out or you could be applying too much strain to your power supply. One of the most common symptoms for a power supply related issue is for those of you on gaming PCs or if you have a friend that has a gaming PC, if they're playing some of their favorite games and their PC outright turns off. It doesn't blue screen, it doesn't crash, it just outright shuts off as if the power has gone out. This is typically a sign of a power supply related issue. In most cases, it's not that the power supply is on its way out, it's actually because you could be straining the power supply too much because the components you are using might be stressing the amount of output that power supply can deliver. The first step you should take to see if it's a power supply related issue is to disable any overclocking you have on your system outright. Disable any CPU overclocks, revert them back to stock, go to your GPU if you have an overclock applied for that, restore that back to stock, run through the same games and tests and see if your crashing continues. If your crashing stops, it could have been due to an unstable overclock you've had applied, or it could be due to the amount of power being drawn from your system has been reduced, therefore not stressing the power supply, causing it to turn off. If you are still experiencing the issue at that point, you could still be putting too much strain on your power supply, so the last thing I would check to see if the power supply is still healthy but you're putting too much strain on it, is to download the MSI Afterburner application via Google or linked down below. Inside of the application, we want to navigate over and find the power limit slider, doesn't matter what GPU you have, taking this down below 0% will reduce the amount of power the GPU can draw. For me on this Radeon graphics card I can only reduce this by 6% but on Nvidia GPUs you can usually take this down to about 70. I'd recommend taking it down to about 70 if you can, going down and pressing apply. Now you will notice lower FPS in nearly every single one of your games and that's completely normal because we're reducing the amount of power the GPU can draw which means it can't boost as high. We're only doing this to test to see if the PC is going to continue crashing so don't worry about the reduced performance yet. Run through all of the similar tests and if you're confident the issue has now gone away, well this is more than likely going to be that you are stressing your power supply and the power supply itself isn't actually on its way out. In this case you may need to look at the power supply, see what the rated outputted watts is for the power supply and buy something which has a lot more. For most medium end to high end gaming PCs, as a minimum these days I'd recommend at least 850 watts or higher. If you can't justify upgrading your power supply currently, the cheapest and easiest fix is to look into GPU undervolting which you can find my extensive guide for linked in the description 
description down below, which will show you how to gain more FPS than stock settings on a GPU whilst drastically reducing the power draw. And if that's still too much work, the super easy fix is to just leave the custom power limit you set earlier reduced, but I would take that over a PC crashing any day. The last step to fix any Windows operating system related blue screen errors, crashes or stuttering, which is caused from the OS being corrupted, is to reset your PC. This will apply a fresh installation of Windows to your PC, reset absolutely everything back to stock, and this could be a good idea, especially for those of you that could have had your operating system installed for quite a while. For those of you running on Windows 10 or 11, you can actually do this from your current PC and not need another. I've decided to leave this step for the end of the video because it's a drastic step, it's going to be resetting absolutely everything. Navigate to the bottom left hand side, type reset, and select reset this PC. At the top, you can run through the fix problems without resetting troubleshooter, go through all of those steps and see if that fixes it for you. Alternatively, if you would just like to reset the PC, head over to reset this PC, select reset. You can then choose to keep your personal applications and data, such as your documents. You could also go with remove everything. But before doing this, I'd recommend getting a USB, backing up any super important files, triple checking everything is backed up on your PC that you need, then choosing the option which best matches what you want to do. And there you guys have it. There are a ton more settings, tweaks, and functions available with inside of Windows in which we can utilize to fix some common errors. And if you do have any suggestions or quick fixes in which most people should know, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. If you have enjoyed this video and want to learn more about your PC or how to get the most out of it, consider checking out the two videos on screen now.